great uh, truths of the Bible. I am the Lord that healeth thee. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wound, saith the Lord. Who healeth all thy diseases, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, who restoreth thy youth like the eagle? He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. I will put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Therefore I say unto thee, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. All things are possible to him that believeth. Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. The prayer of a fervent, righteous man availeth much. I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, a broken spirit drieth the bones. The tongue of the wise is health, and Paul says, Glorify God in your body. There is only one healing power. It is called by many names, such as God, infinite healing presence, divine love, divine providence, nature, the miraculous healing power, the life principle, as well as many others. This knowledge goes back into the dim recesses of the past. An inscription has been found written over ancient temples which reads, The doctor dresses the wound and God heals it. The healing presence of God is within you. No psychologist, minister, doctor, surgeon, priest, or psychiatrist heals anyone. For example, the surgeon removes a tumor, thereby removing the block, and making way for the healing power of God to restore you. The psychologist or psychiatrist endeavors to remove the mental block and encourages the patient to adopt a new mental attitude which tends to release the healing presence, flowing through the patient as harmony, health, and peace. The minister asks you to forgive yourself and others and to get in tune with the infinite by letting the healing power of love, peace, and goodwill flow through your subconscious mind, thereby cleansing all the negative patterns that may be lodged therein. This infinite healing presence of life has been called the Father in the Bible. It is the healing agent in all diseases, whether mental, emotional, or physical. The miraculous healing power in your subconscious mind is scientifically directed. Can heal your mind, body, affairs of all disease and impediments when it is scientifically, consciously, and knowingly directed. This healing power will respond to you regardless of your race, creed, or color. It does not care whether you belong to any church or whether you have any creedal affiliations or not. You have had hundreds of healings since you were a child. You can recall how this healing presence brought curative results to cuts, burns, bruises, contusions, sprains, and so on. And in all probability, you did not aid the healing in any way by the application of external remedies. A few years ago, a young man from a local university came to see me with the complaint that he was constantly hearing spirit voices, that they made him do nasty things, and that they would not let him alone. Neither would they permit him to read the Bible or other spiritual books. He was convinced that he was talking to supernatural beings. This young man was clairaudient, not knowing that all men possess this faculty to some degree, he began to think it was due to evil spirits. His superstitious beliefs caused him to ascribe it to departed spirits. Through constant worry, he became a monomaniac on the subject, his subconscious mind dominated and controlled by an all-potent but false suggestion, gradually took over control and mastery of his objective faculties, and his reason abdicated its throne. He was what you would call mentally unbalanced, as are all men who allow their false beliefs to obtain the ascendancy. I explained to this university student that his subconscious mind is of tremendous importance and significance, that it can be influenced negatively and positively, but he had to make sure that he influenced it only positively, constructively, and harmoniously. The subconscious mind possesses transcendent powers, but it is at the same time amenable to good and bad suggestions. The explanation which I gave him made a profound impression on him. 
I gave him the following written prayer, which he was to repeat for 10 or 15 minutes, three or four times a day. God's love, peace, harmony, and wisdom flood my mind and heart. I love the truth, I hear the truth, and I know the truth. I know God is love, and his love surrounds me, enfolds me, and enwraps me. God's river of peace floods my mind, and I give thanks for my freedom. He repeated this prayer slowly, quietly, reverently, and with deep feeling, particularly prior to sleep. By identifying himself with harmony and peace, he brought about a rearrangement of the thought patterns and imagery of his mind. And a healing followed. He brought about a healing of the mind by repetition of these truths, coupled with faith and expectancy. My prayer for him was, John is thinking rightly, he is reflecting divine wisdom and divine intelligence in all his ways. His mind is the perfect mind of God, unchanging and eternal. He hears the voice of God, which is the inner voice of peace and love. God's river of peace governs his mind, and he is full of wisdom, poise, balance, and understanding. Whatever is vexing him is leaving him now, and I pronounce him free and at peace. At the end of a week, this young man was completely free and at peace. Some time ago, a woman told me that her child had a very high fever, was not expected to live. The doctor had prescribed small doses of aspirin and had administered an antibiotic preparation. The mother who was involved in a contemplated divorce suit was terribly agitated and emotionally disturbed. This disturbed feeling was communicated subconsciously to the child, and naturally the child got ill. Children are at the mercy of their parents and are controlled by the dominant mental atmosphere and emotional climate of those around them. They have not yet reached the age of reason when they can take control of their thoughts, emotions, and reactions to life. The mother, at my suggestion, decided to become more at ease and relax her tensions by reading the 23rd Psalm, praying for guidance and for the peace and harmony of her husband. She poured out love and goodwill to him and overcame her resentment and inner rage. The fever of the child was due to the suppressed rage and anger of the mother, which was subjectively felt by the child and expressed as a high fever due to the excitation of the child's mind. Having quieted her own mind, the mother began to pray for her child in this manner. Spirit, which is God, is the life of my child. Spirit has no temperature. It is never sick or feverish. The peace of God flows through my child's mind and body. The harmony, health, love, and perfection of God are made manifest in every atom of my child's body. She is relaxed and at ease, poised, serene, and calm. I am now stirring up the gift of God within her, and all is well. She repeated the above prayer every hour for several hours. Shortly thereafter, she noticed a remarkable change in her child, who awakened and asked for a doll and something to eat. The temperature became normal. What had happened? The fever left the little girl because the mother was no longer feverish or agitated in her mind. Her mood of peace, harmony, and love was instantaneously felt by the child, and a corresponding reaction was produced. We are all natural-born healers for the simple reason that the healing presence of God is within all men, and all of us can contact it with our thoughts. It responds to all. The healing presence is in the dog, the cat, the tree, and the bird. It is omnipresent. It is in the soil. And it is the life of all things. There are d different degrees whether the latter knows it or not, or whether he ascribes it to divine intercession or not, and a response takes place. But according to the patient's belief, is it done unto him? Remember the story in the Bible where the dead man was commanded, and he said to the dead man, Young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. That's in the book of Luke. When it says the dead man sat up and began to speak, it means that when your prayer is answered, you speak in a new tongue of joyous health, and you exude an inner radiance. Your dead hopes and desires speak when you bear witness to your inner beliefs and assumptions. As a corollary to this, I would like to tell you about a young man I saw in Ireland a few years ago. He was a distant relative. He was in a comatose condition.